Hey guys, this is Brad and Mike from Dallas Geek, and today we're gonna go into our next installment of the nerd culture in the media. I, I guess is what we're continuing to call it. I feel like we need to come we, up with a probably name. should. Yeah, probably should. Yeah, for sure. Eh. Either way, um, so the part that we want to focus on right now is uh, the big issue with jumping to conclusions at the start of uh, comic storylines that might be seen as a, different, a little too different or controversial. Should we, uh, should we bust out the old jumping to conclusions, Matt, to use on this? Well, it seems you didn't think you were going to get an office space jumping to conclusions, Matt, reference this morning, did you? I'm on top of my game today. So, keep talking. <laughs> Uh, some of the biggest times that we've seen this recently, um, well, the worst was at the beginning of the Secret Empire storyline, uh, when it was revealed well, that, that wasn't Captain even, America... Spoilers! Spoilers! Yeah. Spoilers. I, dude, it was literally on every major, not just entertainment, but even news well, hey, headlines. maybe some people don't watch fake news like CNN and MSNB. Okay, I couldn't say <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're going there this morning. Okay. Uh, um, but still, yeah. s spoiler warning is fair. Fine. Spoiler warning. Okay. And by the way, that didn't happen at the beginning of Secret Empire. That happened like I know. a year it and a half ago. It was, but it led into it happened, Secret the Empire. It didn't happen before Civil War II. Yeah. So uh, it was the reveal of Captain America secretly being Hydra. Um, Captain Hydra is what he's calling himself now. Yeah, but that happened in Secret Empire. <laughs> That's why I said now, you dumbass. Anyway, Maybe so like Red Foreman this morning. Wow. Anyway, so uh, this one we saw enough backlash from people that uh, oh, major, yeah, we major news outlets were actually covering this storyline because there were people sending legitimate death threats to the author, and our light just went out. Yeah, that's weird. Ah, that's unfortunate. Screw it. Keep talking. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, the. Author of uh, the comics at the time um, was getting actual death threats, uh, saying that this was a betrayal of the character, this was a betrayal of uh, the fans. Now I will it, say it was. Uh, they were even saying that it was uh, anti-Semitic, and uh, this guy should be charged with hate uh, with a hate crime for it. Now I don't think he should have been charged with hate crimes, but people that were complaining about the fact that a character that was made by two Jewish authors at a time to use as propaganda to fight against the Nazis being secretly made to be a Nazi the whole time. I can really understand why people were pissed off about that. Well, yeah, but at the same time, it was the start was of a story. Right, right. We've seen so no, no, many... No, no. Not, I, not only have we seen so many characters in comics in general get reinvented, but Captain America has been reinvented. He went through a whole phase during, what, the, what was it, the, uh, the 80s, I think, where he wasn't even called Captain America 70s. anymore. 70s. With Nixon. And... He had, what oh, was it, horrendous. bright yellow, was it? No, uh, Nomad, the man without a country. Yeah, uh, Nomad, bright yellow, I think it was, shirt, open down uh, to his friggin' crotch, just chest exposed to everybody, looked the weirdest, most absurd you know, freaking thing they've ever done A lot done of people try to forget Nomad. Yeah, and yet, right how is so. this honestly that much more absurd than Nomad when at least this has a point in the storyline, whereas that was a political statement about the current president. That's true, it, but there was a... So, the, the counter-argument I have to that is that there was a lead-up to Nomad. This was literally, like, at the end of Captain America 1 into Marvel Now, it just happens like that, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. And But, I mean, we got... The explanation, which made sense, we got the whole... Does it really make sense, though? <laughs> Considering all the other weird stuff Marvel's done to explain their storylines... Touché. To say that literally anything is possible the second any of the Infinity Stones goes into play... Yeah, I'd say it's about That's, as yeah, close to making sense as anything they enough, do. I guess. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a comic book where... You have a guy that literally shoots laser beams out of his eyes. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. But then uh, you have it, 
since you brought it up, um, we had the whole run of Marvel Now, uh, all yeah. new, all different Marvel. Uh, Which there was actually some decent stuff to come out. Like I actually liked the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider. I um, I actually was a fan of the um, uh, the the new Hulk. Um, Amadeus Chow. Thank you, Amadeus Chow. Yeah. <laughs> I liked I. I after so much Bruce Banner and uh, the constant back and forth with, oh, I, I have to keep myself in control. No, I have to unleash. I have to keep myself under control. I have to unleash. I have to find balance. Having a character be able to come in, take over the role as the Hulk, not a Hulk, but the Hulk, Hulk yeah. and fully embrace it. Uh, and not just that, but enjoy it for the most part. No. That was something I, I thought was desperately need for the character. Yeah. Um, it, it gave some great story opportunities. Agreed. Um, and, I mean, say what you will about the choice of changing up Iron Man or Thor or whoever. It, Jane Foster's been a good I Thor. Had no, Spoiler I, alert. I've had no problem uh, with any of that. Um, yeah. But then you go over to the DC side and you have uh, the New 52. And uh, there was the, a, there the was... new... Um, um, Mar uh, DC Rebirth. Uh, there was some lines. good to come out of the New Fifty Two. They just they wrote themselves into a corner bad, way too fast. Right. But but also I will say one thing that really there were some good things uh, that came out of the story. I one mean, thing that Batman really bothered me about the New Fifty Two was was that you had stuff from the original DC continuity that carried over. Yeah, and then you had stuff that didn't. Like you had Batman Inc. carry over. Yep. So Batman Inc. had their own uh, had their own comic. Yep. But Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne reverted back to not knowing each other's identities. And I was like, well, no. Like, she went with him to help pick out and train exactly. the members of Batman Inc. Like, how is this? What? No, it, that, that one didn't make any sense. No. Um, but. Yeah, but I mean, but there was also good stuff. It, like, it brought, it brought Barbara Gordon back as Batgirl. Yep. Um, Which was a uh, fantastic choice. And it was Gail Simone part. writing it again, thank God. It's a fantastic choice in their oh, part. Oh, so good. Uh, you had Supergirl back in like, a more meaningful role, but she didn't speak English because, or she didn't speak, yeah, yep. I guess any earthbound language because she had just basically woken up out of the, hmm? uh, out of her pot, um, kind of trying to figure out her place in the world. And then you had uh, the Green Lanterns were like not touched by the New 52. Uh, Right. reboot at all right um but then you had so many people going into that and the uh, dc rebirth uh both uh making automatic assumptions about certain characters certain storylines that caused some pretty decent stories to be cut off before they even really hit their stride yeah um but we did get the return of a lot of beloved classic characters in rebirth like pre new 52 wally was that was awesome yeah and that's uh, the thing that rebirth is getting right, yeah. and I think more people are willing to give Rebirth a chance than they did the New 52. Oh, who's writing Rebirth? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Wonder why that's going over so well. So, yeah, I, it, it just seems considering how long uh, oh, these franchises one, have been going. One good thing that we did get out of the New 52, though, is that we got Jeff Johns basically like, no, I'm kind of tired that these characters are punchlines now. I'm going to fucking write them. So he took over for Aquaman. He took over for Shazam. He took over on Justice League. Yes. And it made yes, those characters yes. like, oh, God, thank God he took over on Aquaman. Yeah. No, he, he made the biggest difference on Aquaman in making him a character that was actually worth reading. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been amazing. Yeah. Um, so that was actually one really good thing that came out of the new 52 is that you got really good writers. You had um, uh Scott Snyder take over on Batman and that fantastic run with the Court of oh the Owls gosh, and everything yes. like yeah oh, so fucking good but i i will say that um <sighs> the the fact that these franchises have been around for as long as they have yeah. have had so many different uh versions and changes and Additions, subtractions, uh, destructions of entire characters. Yeah. Um, and now the fact that whenever they go and make a full overhaul of a storyline yeah. and they name that overhaul, 
that's the thing that seems to be getting under people's skin. No. Not the, uh, completely ignoring the fact that this has happened more times than I, I think most people can even remember I say DC's, at this point. DC's basically, been, D- DC's basically done a total reboot, relaunch twice in the last six years, five years. Yeah, but Marvel. I mean, when uh, Marvel, how many times well, did yeah. the uh, storylines for Batman, Superman, uh, all the big characters get just completely redone? Uh, back in the 60s, yeah. 70s, 80s, with, they just didn't make a big deal out of it. It right. was just all of a sudden, different storyline. Yeah. So why is, uh, why is it now that they, uh, those re, uh, changes are given a big name, that's when everybody starts taking offense, but they never had a problem with it before. It was just, I'm not sure I like the storyline anymore. I think, it might just be, but, I think it might just be in all honesty that it's happening more often now. Not crossovers, not, not, not as, crossovers, but not I'm talking as about much. Like, I mean, if you really look back, it happened often enough. I mean, it does feel more often now. I'm going to be honest, man. I, I can't I'm going to go ahead and chalk a lot of this up to the publishers having a really bad marketing problem. And they just, yeah, they that. don't know how to market these changes because yeah. they think every little change has to be marketed in some big over-the-top way rather than just letting it be. And yeah. just let the readers experience it, make their own decisions uh, without having to have some massive campaign around every tiny change you make. That's true. Batman gets a, a new suit redesign. We have to make it front page material that everybody pays attention to yeah. rather than, you know, one issue, he has one suit. The next issue, he has a different suit. Yippee. Right. I, I, I think it's a marketing issue more than anything else. And people are having a backlash on the marketing and just not realizing it's the marketing. Agreed. I mean, that, that's, that's me, but no, it could no. be something else. And, uh, I'm just, maybe I'm just not picking up on it. No, you're cool. I mean, so, I, th- I think you're right. Um, I also just think in all honesty, it might just be that people's attention spans are a lot shorter nowadays. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, it, it could just be that now that we actually have more of a voice to actually lash out as fans, we got social media, so we can be like, oh, I hate what they're doing. Hashtag bring back this. Hashtag undo that. And that that's the other thing uh, that really bothers me about all of this yeah. is that we, we can't, it seems to be, take change uh, when it comes to these characters and stories that we love without there needing to be some massive outcry of hate or complaining or trolling, whether sarcastic uh, in intent or actual malice. Um, it just, it, it feels like there has been some kind of shift in the community that has people just going way too far yeah. with uh, expressing their opinions and they can't just handle it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I totally agree. I totally agree. I, think I don't know. This is, it, 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 it bothers me way more than it probably should. But at the same time, I hate seeing the artists and uh, writers that we uh, enjoy yeah. uh, getting just trashed so hard because fans decided they couldn't handle change. No, I and don't that, that that really bothers me. I think fans just need to realize that they need to sit back and let the story unfold. Yeah, I mean, th- there's a reason why these stories are split into tiny little single issues that are going to be stretching over months. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted the whole story, then wait for the trade and don't yeah. pay attention to anything about the story until then. Agreed. Otherwise, learn patience. It, it's, it's that simple. I don't know. Like Captain America said at the end of Homecoming, the greatest trait a soldier can have is patience. With that, um, (laughs) this is... uh, Spoiler alert, by the way. (laughs) Oh, Uh, dear Lord. Uh, (laughs) With that, this is Brad and Mike from Dallas Geek. (laughs) See ya.